This is a West Marine PRU3 inflatable. It's roll up. I got it as a dinghy for my Boston Whaler so that I could anchor offshore and go into a beach without the larger boat being stuck at low tide or if it's crowded in the summer, not having to fight for dock space. Um, but I took it out on a freshwater lake and it was originally disappointing because it had what I thought was cavitation at full throttle. It turns out that it was ventilation, not cavitation. And when it tried to get up on plane, it would suck in air and lose the plane, but then it would grab the water and it would go back and it would just oscillate back and forth and be extremely annoying to the point where I didn't know if I made a mistake by not getting a rigid air floor or if I needed more than three and a half horsepower. I didn't really want a heavier motor because this is 42 pounds with fuel that might be 50 pounds. And to lower this onto the dinghy from my other boat at sea, it just seemed like I wouldn't want anything heavier than this. Also, my kids could use this and this would be easier for them to manage. So I was trying to find a solution for this surging problem. Originally, I thought it might be because I only had the tubes inflated with a foot pump and couldn't get above two PSI. So I got this electric pump, which is fantastic, by the way. I compared it to another one and it's two and a half times faster. So look for one that looks like that. But that made it go to three and a half PSI. It did not solve my problem. So I'm trying a different propeller. And I also have some uh, foils here. Now I had to cut these on a chop saw because this hole would have been off the edge if I didn't bring this in. So I'm going to test with and without this and see what that does for my top speed and planning ability. This is the factory prop that I took off. It's fiber reinforced plastic. And this is an aluminum one from Amazon. It's a dramatic improvement. It's fine now. $30 prop on Amazon totally solved the problem. On that last run, I just had on the upgraded prop, but now I have on the Dolphin. Let's see what they can both do together. I will also say that when I did just the upgraded prop, I had to trim in that position. I'm gonna try multiple trim positions on this run. Here we are with the Dolphin. move the trim one position upward. We're going to see how the speed changes. The speed was about 8.1 knots with the trim all the way down and the dolphin.
Now we have on the Dolphin the aluminum prop and the trim is two positions up from all the way down. This is clearly not as good as the last setting, so I think the optimal setting is to back off one and go down one position up from all the way down trim. was backed off again one position up from all the way down and I hit 8.4 knots this seems to be the optimal setting the dolphin didn't raise my speed and as far as I could tell it didn't lower my speed what it does do for me is protects the prop it seems a lot safer like if a kid reached down they'd be a lot less likely to hit the prop or even if they fell in the water. Plus it has some side protection. But I could say about this particular hydrofoil compared to the others is that it's clearly designed as an airfoil shape. The instructions say that it was designed by an aeronautical engineer. And that really shows when I look at some of the other ones, if not all of the other ones, they they just seem to be a more of a straight shape that doesn't try to optimize the lift to drag ratio. So I may buy another one of these for my Boston Whaler because it seems to not have any downside. And it may also act as a stabilizer because it's under the water surface. The boat hull will raise and lower on surface waves but this being under the water should provide some stability so with that said I'm totally happy with this boat package now mostly due to this propeller and a little bit because of the fin so that's it for now I solved my problem with the ventilation and I think it was just from a stiffer prop and a slightly smaller diameter one. That's all it needed.